Madam Chair, it's no surprise that carbon monoxide poisoning is something that can impact all Americans regardless of where you live. However, we have seen in Georgia the effects of carbon monoxide poisoning on people. In early January, the Savannah Fire Department responded to a home where a mother and her children were experiencing the symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning. It occurs much more frequently than many of us realize. According to the CDC, 50,000 people a year in the United States experience carbon monoxide poisoning. Of those, at least 430 people die from accidental carbon monoxide poisoning. That's why I joined my friend, Ms. Custer, in introducing HR 1618, the Nicholas and Zachary Burt Carbon Monoxide Poisoning Prevention Act in March. This legislation would establish a grant program for states to help assist them in carrying out CO poisoning prevention actions. Those grants can be used for everything from installing alarms in the units of elderly individuals to training officials in the installation of such alarms. While I'm happy to see this legislation sponsored by my good friend move through committee, I was disappointed to learn that the pay for included in the underlying legislation would be struck under this amendment. I believe it is good fiscal practice to ensure we can fund these very programs we're here to help stand up. While this legislation can still be funded through discretionary appropriations, I hope that we can continue to work together in a fashion that will ensure that these programs can be a benefit to the people who need it the most, the American public. I look forward to working with my colleagues to improve safety and provide the tools and resources needed to combat this horrible statistic. Carbon monoxide poisoning is a terrible occurrence and working together to lower injuries and especially deaths is a step in the right direction. I yield back.